Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I'm sitting here with Ellie. Ellie Bear, I call her Ellie Bear. Right, you ready to show them your tricks, Ellie? So these are the tricks we've been working on. First of all, come here, come. Good girl, sit, <laughs> sit, good girl. Down, all the way down. Good girl, good girl. She still needs the treat right there as a cue, but she's doing better and better and better. It took us like two days for us to learn. It took us two days for her to learn to to go down. And come is still funny. Like she's still a bit iffy about come, come. Good girl, sit, sit. Good girl, down. Down. You have to go all the way down. Good girl. Good girl. Isn't she so smart? I love her so much, you guys. Oh my gosh. It's been like having a baby. I'm not even joking. She has been so much fun. I love babies. I love kids. These are my treat. That's my treat bag, Ellie. Nope. She drags it around. Come here. Sit. Down. Down. All the way down. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. But good morning, guys. Welcome to today's video. Today it is already 1.30 and we've just been hanging out. It takes me forever to do stuff now. It takes me forever to clean up. When I come downstairs in the morning, I'm here with Ellie. <laughs> I sleep with Ellie. I'm here with Ellie. I sit on the floor with Ellie because she... Hey, where'd you find that treat? <laughs> Because she likes me to be down on the floor with her. She doesn't like to come and be picked up and cuddled on my lap. She wants me to sit beside her. Or she wants to sit on my lap. So I have to sit on the floor. <laughs> anyway, my mornings are consumed with Ellie. And then, by the time everybody else gets up, she's done her breakfast. She's done her zoomies. I need to do a day in the life of Ellie, man. So, after everything's done, she often wants a nap. So then, I'm nap trapped. Did you guys know it's possible to be, to be nap trapped with a puppy? I'm totally nap trapped. She'll sit here now and she wants me to sit here while she naps. And I do. <laughs> and I do it because it's the same thing. Well, one, I'm trying to build a bond. And two, it's the same thing with my boys. Like, literally, they grew up so fast and everything just went so fast. And, I, and same with like Macy and all the dogs I've ever had. It goes so fast. I want to like have these minutes with her. I just want to have these minutes with her. She's totally my dog. She chose me. Sophie tried to steal her from me, but she loves me. She also loves Sophie. She's totally got the best personality. She's got Macy's personality where she loves everybody and will go to everybody. She is so independent. She doesn't like to be snuggled. Like even when we sleep together at night, she sleeps like on the pillows or outside of the blankets. She doesn't like to get too hot. <laughs> But how could you walk away from this? And if I go on my phone, I swear to God, she gets like frustrated with me. She stares at me and she stares at the phone. She doesn't understand the phone. So I'm always putting my phone down just to play with her, just to sit with her because it makes her happy. Anyway, I changed her little area today. I, I've i never done a setup like this for the, for the Chihuahuas. I wish I had of, I love it. I love it so much. Like, she goes in there all the time. Her food and her water is there. She knows where to pee. I put her potty pan over there, which is what I want her to eventually just go on, not like all these pee pads. And she goes there. As soon as I put it there, she ran in there and she peed. Um, I'm going to take that little thing out, the little pink thing out, because it's too small for her almost. So I'm just going to leave a blanket in there for her to lay on in her toys. And then her food is just over there and her water. I love it a lot because the other dogs don't fit in there and because she understands that that's her place to go and it's where she feels safe. This is how we sit all the time. <laughs> she wants to lay beside me or on my lap. She doesn't want me to pick her up and snuggle her. I know the last few vlogs have been all about Ellie, but it's hard when you get like a new puppy and they need so much care from you. It's hard to do anything else. Um, and the weather has been really yucky. So soon guys, soon, I promise we'll be back to making horse videos. I had planned what I wanted to do today, but Sam fed the horses inside because he said that the wind was like crazy outside. And so he fed the horses in the arena today. So it's a big mess in the arena. That's what happens when we feed them inside. So I can't shoot the video I wanted to shoot. So hopefully it'll be tomorrow. And we're back to nap trap, nap trap. Just me sitting here talking to you guys. 
She's walked around and then come back, climbed up on my lap, and then laid down. I also wanted to tell you guys what color she's going to be. Her parents are. Um, obviously silver and tan, so all this will be silver. And so everywhere there's brown will be like a blonde color, and everywhere there's black will be this silver color. So she'll be like blonde and silver. The tan, her parents, the tan on her parents, it got really, really light. So she's like a really, really light. It's almost like a blonde and silver. So she won't look like this for very long, but I love the black and the tan. The other thing that I wanted to say about her is that, that I'm not familiar with is that she's hungry all the time. She knows the sound of every package opening. Like she's... <laughs> She knows the sound of food. Like anybody who goes into the kitchen, <laughs> she runs in there because she knows there's food. Feed her in here, but she knows that the other dogs have food out there. So she'll eat her food in here, then she'll go out there and she'll eat their food. She asks for food a hundred times a day. She seems like she's hungry all the time, but she's not like a tiny little dog. She's, she's not skinny. I definitely want to make sure that she doesn't overeat because she seems like that kind of a dog. But I do also believe that if a dog has enough to eat all the time to satisfy their hunger, that they won't overeat. But with potty training, I definitely need to know when she's eating all the time so that I can make sure that she's going to the bathroom where she needs to go. So if you have any advice for her being a food monger, please let me know. Over here in school, we've got this big board of murder. So somebody was murdered and Gabby's trying to figure out who murdered her. So these are all the pictures of her laying on the ground. She was pushed from a building, right Gabby? Yeah. She was pushed from a building. Is that her? Yes. Oh, that's her. And she was pushed from a building and they made it look like suicide. So, so these are all the suspects. Let's see who it was. I think it was Paul Preakness and Olivia Underwood. Are they criminals? No. Okay, I think it was him. Look at those eyes. Two out of the three with the most. They are the two out of the three out of three with no. the most. No. So this is what Gabby's setup is. So for school today and yesterday and probably tomorrow, she is doing a unsolved case file. And it's like this really in depth it's kinda like a game that you buy. And you That's have weird. all it is a game. Yeah. And then you have all the information. Like, see how she's got it all set up like a real detective? So Sam is a private investigator, and he was helping her with it. Did he help? He started reading them. Oh. Did he, like, but did he make it easier for you? Give some of his wisdom onto you? He was learning the case, mm. so no. Mm. So are you taking notes? He in already your... said what I knew. He already said what you knew? Maybe you take after him and you're going to be a private investigator. No. So so one of the reasons I like my kids to do stuff like this for school um, is because it's an opportunity to learn something new and see if you're interested. It's in finding things that you're interested in that you learn to, you learn what you want to do with your life. Hi, Ellie Bear. Hi, Ellie Bear. <laughs> she likes anybody. She's like, yes, put me up here. I think there's food up here. <laughs> She's a food demon for sure. Because Sam's a private investigator, you never know if Gabby or Sophie will like that too. On the dog front. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ruby is still the only dog that is horrified that we got a puppy. She hates her so much. And then today, I'm being attacked. And then today, Molly was hiding under the desk while I was doing some work and the puppy, Ellie came running up to me, saw Molly there and she knows Molly hates her. So like the little tawny dog that she is, she cowered behind my chair and barked her head off. She was barking at Molly, like growling and barking and Molly was like, you better get out of here, I'll eat you. <laughs> Luckily our dogs all listen to us and they trust us and they believe in us and None of them have ever made like a, a wrong move towards her in aggression or anything, but Molly really does not like her. It's going to be a while. Uh, Daisy will play with her, but she's very territorial about all of us with her and she doesn't do anything bad, but you can see that she's always watching to make sure that puppy doesn't do anything bad. Don't push me. <laughs> Don't push me. And Ruby, 
is the only one that has accepted her. Ruby doesn't love her, but she is tired of fighting her off. So Ellie has like the best personality. She just always goes up to people and tries to love on them and to spend time with them even when they say no. And I'll have a picture, I'll put it in here, but Ruby actually lets her sleep with her now and she's the first one to give in. I really think it's a breed thing because Ruby is such a family loving kind of breed and not territorial, not possessive, none of those things and she just accepts. But as you can see, everywhere I go, <laughs> little Miss Ellie is right behind me. She follows me everywhere, except up the stairs because she can't do that yet. I was telling my daughter-in-law today though that like when Macy died, I was like, oh, I'm never getting another dog, like another little dog. I'm just not, I'm not doing it again. It's not in my heart, I don't want one. I was excited to like get rugs now that our puppies are bigger and I don't have to worry about potty training them and stuff. I was excited about a new time in our life. But I swear God it slowly progressed me from not ever wanting another puppy to healing my heart and making me want another puppy. I didn't want a puppy, but I was cleaning out the basement after Christmas and all of us and I found all of these things that Macy owned. I found like all of her clothes and her carriers and beds and so many things and every time I would find one I'd say okay I'm gonna throw this out but then there was this little part of me that was like well what if what if I get another dog <laughs> I'm being surrounded <laughs> every time we vlog they all come because they think like it's some party that we're having like we're they love to be videoed slowly over time my thoughts started to change and I was like okay well maybe I'll get another little dog one day. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll get another little dog if I could get a, a Yorkie. And then I was thinking like, okay, fine. Like maybe only if I get it in the size that I want. And then it was like, I need it to be like a certain look. I can't, I don't want just a Yorkie. I want it to like look the way I want it to look. I want it to be the size that I want. And and then I started looking for one and then I found one. It was this teeny, teeny, tiny little thing. It was so small, even though I knew in my heart that I, I didn't want a small Yorkie because I wanted it to be good on the farm. So when I found a Yorkie, I, when I found that little teeny, tiny Yorkie, I fell in love with it and I was like, okay, fine, I'll get it. But I have to ask Sam and if Sam says no, then I'm not gonna get it. And I asked Sam and he said, you should get it. And I was like, oh man. And then I asked about her and she would just sold. She wasn't available anymore. And then something in me said, Laura, you like the look of these puppies by the sister, by one of the sisters. And so I did, I asked right away. I was standing in Costco when she sent me the message that said that the one that I wanted was gone. And right away I was like almost shaking because I was so nervous. I said, okay, fine, I'll take this one. I'll take her sister. And it was like, it just happened so easily and so fast. And I just wanted to share that story with you guys because Ellie has given me so much hope and love and excitement for life. Like she is napping. <laughs> it's been amazing to like bond with Sophie over the whole thing. Like Sophie loves her and has spent so much time with her. Sam loves her, like getting to sleep with her and her being such a perfect puppy it has been the biggest blessing of my life. So like lately, it's been the biggest blessing of my life lately. It's sent me in a whole new direction and made me excited for new things. And she's really healed my heart. I wanted to tell you guys the story of how I got her because I wanted to t share with you guys how God slowly progressed my heart from saying I'm never going to get another puppy to surrounding me with all of these things that made my heart want another puppy. And he does that for me and he does it for all of you guys too. And I just wanted to share it with you guys so that maybe the next time you're going through a situation where you're not sure what to do, you'll be able to look around and see the clues that God is giving to you to guide you in a particular way. So that's the only reason I told you guys. I wanted to just explain if learning to look for the clues that God gives you can help even just one person make a choice that it, that makes things better for them, then I think it's important. I've got one dog here, one dog here, and one dog there. And the one dog missing is the one that's terrified. All right guys, so I saw something on TikTok and we're gonna do it. We're gonna make our own ice cream. So I went to the store today 
And I got these mason jars, these big mason jars. I bought some whipping cream. And I bought all this stuff to go in it. Chickens, walnuts, milk chocolate, peanut butter mix, Reese's Pieces. Are we gonna have to shake this? And some syrup if we wanna make a chocolate instead. Yeah. So I would throw some chocolate in there now. If you there's the English side. That's what we use, 35% whipping cream. Yeah, we're throwing chocolate in there. She's making, oh, not too much, man. That's too much chocolate. No, it's not. Yeah, too much chocolate. She used half of this for chocolate. Oh. So we got Hershey's chocolate. I'm gonna make oh mine God. a little bit chocolatey. A little bit. You keep mine vanilla. Sophie's keeping hers vanilla. I'm gonna make mine a little bit coffee flavored and I got this jabby concentrate and make it coffee flavored. I added my coffee extract into the mix. Sugar and then put some of that in there, maybe one of those. And we need a pinch of salt. So we got oh a pinch my God, of salt. I got enough left. Might need two pinches because this is almost a double. Pinch of salt. Shake the crap out of it. Alright, we shake it. Five and we'll be back after uh, four or five minutes. Right, so mine's like almost like whipped cream. I'm gonna throw some of this in there. Then I'm gonna just um, shake it in there. I love how they don't sink. Shake it and then put it in the freezer. In the freezer for an hour oh, or so. Mine, like, fell to the bottom. Alright, moment of truth. What does it look like? Uh, still whipped cream. Oh, it's not, not done yet. How's yours? Is that mine? How was yours? How was yours? Mine's melted. Yours melted, it's not ready yet. I tried mine, tastes good, but it's not ice cream yet. So, I'm gonna have to put it in. We only had it in for maybe an hour. It yeah. needs to be in there for at least two hours. So, we'll get back to you tomorrow and let you know how it turns out. Don't you know?